Hey, real quick before we start today's video, I just want to invite you guys to a free web class that I'm doing talking about microgreens and how you can make 1500 bucks a week profit without selling to any of the conventional market streams such as farmers markets, restaurants, distributors, or grocery stores. Out of all the over thousand videos that I've published on my YouTube channel and my website over the last six years, this is by far the most valuable and relevant to the time content that I've ever produced. If that sounds interesting to you, click the link in the top right of the screen or go directly to microgreensweblass.com or follow the link beneath this video. I'm in Airdrie, Alberta at Micro Acres and if you guys watch my channel fairly regularly, you've probably seen a video I did with these guys last year. Well, I'm at their new location and they have literally doubled the size of their production. The space they're in is far more than double, but the last time I visited here, they were farming microgreens in their basement and doing about 10,000 a month. Now they're doing double that with the potential to even double and potentially quadruple that in this year. So they've gone over a major overhaul of their operation and they're scaling it up. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the five things that they've done in order to meet that demand and scale this operation to where it is now so that they can move forward and grow the operation even larger than what you're gonna see in this video. So let's go check it out. Wow, you guys, this space is incredible. Why did you decide to make this upgrade and move to a space like this? Basically, we just ran out of space. We were in 600 square feet. We've now taken over about 2,500 square feet, plus about 800 square foot mezzanine, mm -hmm. plus a front area. This allows us to really grow sustainably. We need to continue to grow this David, farm. David, 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 David. I gotta what? slow you down there, dude. You're mansplaining again. <laughs> let's, let's, can we? Can I need we, to be the white knight. I need to can, bring yeah, this can in. We, so. Can we hear this from Kirsten, please? Absolutely. Sorry about that. Absolutely. Yeah. As David was mansplaining, we were out of space in the basement. We were out of power, we were out of space. Uh, we were, the humidity and stuff was just getting to be too much for the house. Uh, so we found a space. We looked for about six months for the proper space, for a space that was affordable and sustainable for us to be able to move here and not um, kind of just go into the hole, which is the whole point as to why we were in the basement to begin with. Uh, so we, yeah, we found this place. We landed it in September and we moved in October. Did some fun upgrades. Uh, Want to get before winter again. That was the yeah. biggest thing with our operation growing. Wanted to continue to grow the farm, hey, through the winter time, yeah, and, and not put the house through another winter. Alberta gets cold, and when the house is warm inside, it's hard for to you know hard to balance those things. So the reason uh, moving in obviously was to be able to grow more, mm -hmm. but with that comes the challenges. We were running about eight thousand cubic feet in the basement. This is about seventy-five thousand cubic feet. So with that comes a lot of challenges, specifically airflow. How do we mitigate that? Humidity, temp. So we're very fortunate. We have a new heater. We added a big HRV system, a bunch of duct work. Uh, and the biggest one, uh, Christian can I go over, will be kind of the upgrade for electrical, which was one of the biggest things we had to do, mm -hmm. being obviously a farm with a lot of lighting. Yeah, so for the electrical, we um, thankfully, we are extremely fortunate that a good friend of ours is an electrician and he was able to help us out with that, again, saving us on some costs. Um, but we wanted to move to a galley style um, farm just for ease of watering, time saving, um, it looks pretty, things like that. So we had to upgrade the electrical to, to be able to put those conduit boxes in appropriate spacing to be able to do that. Also to make sure that each rack has its own circuit um, that way. Yeah, so by doing that, so we run this, we're running basically 20 amp conduits all the way down. We run about 400 trays right now on the lighting uh, any given day. We can probably do three to four times just on this basic footprint without adding to the mm -hmm. mezzanine. So everything was thinking phase one, phase two growth. Four of the times we're gonna do one big electrical build out, let's just do it right away. So that was the main one. And then the second one was obviously the airflow. So we needed to add a big, as I mentioned before, a big HRV system so we can pull out. So we're pulling out fresh air. This entire place is changing over every two hours, roughly. So fresh air coming in, the old air kind of coming out and also mitigating all the humidity down to the 40% range. So last year you guys were doing about 10 grand a month mm -hmm. in production. Yep. This year you're already at about 20. Yeah. Yep. So with what you just said, it sounds like you have the ability to even quadruple what you are now. Is that, am I right? Uh, it would be, yeah, within the yep. same so footprint, uh, running the same. 80,000 a month in gross sales. Within probably two space. years, yeah. And that's kind of our model. It's probably a double every year. 
As you can see, this footprint is a little bit different than we were in the basement. Uh, we've chosen to go galley style. Um, a couple of reasons uh, being airflow is a little bit easier for us in the galley style, um, as well as it makes it a little bit easier to water. So we can go down one row, turn around, come back up the other way. Again, it's saving us time uh, as we still do hand water every single crop. Um, we also do galley style. It helps just with airflow, like I said, with airflow. So the fans are able to, we can just shoot them down a row. You're getting both sides of that, um, that galley. Some crops don't need as much. So the peas are kind of hidden. They don't have as much airflow. They just don't seem to, to need it. And that's one of the biggest things we do. So on the periphery, so on this side we have the radish, the herbs, a lot of crops that need a lot more airflow. So we have dedicated fans to them. Same on the far end, that's a lot of our brassicas, arugula, mm -hmm. uh, more petite greens, and they need a little more airflow so we don't get that condensation. Everything in the middle is a little less. We don't need to worry as much about the peas, mm -hmm. the radish, the sunflowers for constant airflow. Yeah. So everything on the farm is designed for uh, their intended purpose. And if we can mitigate a lot of the factors such as electricity and airflows, again, mm -hmm. it's just one more you know, money saving aspect to the farm. The goal for us is always to be sustainable. We need yeah. to be here five, 10, 15 years from now so every single step we do for the farm for growth is designed for that long-term objective. And definitely, actually one of the challenges of moving into the space was figuring out which crops did best where. So there's, we're in a warehouse, there's a bit of slope to the floor, um, things like that. So figuring out that the brassicas do better on the end where they're not kind of trapped into somewhere. The arugulas do better here. We can throw the peas somewhere else. We can, you know, those kind of things. Figuring out what likes where, um, figuring out the slopes, the hot spots, yeah. things like that as well. And also redeveloping a lot of our uh, planting schedule. Mm -hmm. So mo everything you see here, uh, these guys are literally six days old. So they were planted, it's currently Friday. These were planted last Saturday. And they're pretty much ready for harvest here within the next 24 hours if we wanted to. They're probably gonna carry up another 48. Yeah. And a lot of the longer term growing, so the radishes, peas, sunflowers were planted eight days ago. Yeah. So everything the farm is still running that, on, about 80% of the farm is still running on a nine to 11 day grow cycle. We do have fewer, lo few long term um, crops we are integrating into the farm. But again, everything for us is high yield, high turnover, trying to bring great crops and quality out to the clients, but not having them sit on the shelf for four to five weeks. The goal is to have the revenue to continue to come back into the business. Uh, so we are still doing things like these, or we're still doing the subscription model for our clients. Um, and part of moving into a bigger space means that we can take on more clients. Um, we offer those just as so we can basically approach families uh, and say, here is a product, not just it looks not pretty confetti on top of your dish. Here's something that is going to be nutritious for your kids, nutritious for you. Um, we've been trying to work really hard at making it um, approachable. So why should I use a pea shoot or a sunflower shoot? What what is it? What's in it for them? Um, and so we've been doing a lot of research into the nutrient aspect of that, uh, the benefits of a microgreen, and then trying to be able to put that together for families and just even help them put together a simple breakfast. What does that look like? Where do I use a radish? Where do I use a pea shoot? Things like that. Um, we are finding that families are loving things like the pea shoots and the sunflowers because their kids are eating vegetables again. They eat them, they're excited about it. I know our daughter loves the sunflower shoots, so we obviously let her eat those as much as she wants because they're high in protein, they're high in fiber, things like that. And, that, and along the same lines, that's, that's what we do description, but it also parallels to the wholesale clients, the restaurants, the hotels. Mm -hmm. We want this to be a convenient product where it doesn't have to be just a garnish on top of a plate, but actually be integrated into full salads, into where your, the microgreen is as important for the plating as the main protein, say. Yeah. And that's always been our goal. We want to bring things that are accessible, flavorful, great color profiles. And the day you got to fun with it. We're growing microgreens. We really want to bring a product that can be sold to anybody, whether it's a breakfast spot or as a high-end restaurant. And that's how we always want to approach all the crops we do. And we get to know the chefs that way and it's not hurting their food costs. They're able to incorporate this into their menu week after week. And that's the biggest thing we always try to focus on with our, with our model. 
I think some of the most exciting things for us is seeing people that are getting excited about it, families or singles who are excited for me to drop off their greens to them every week because we still do our own deliveries. So even at this stage, we are still doing, we're still going and meeting chefs, meeting with families every week. Um, but watching those people open the door and they're like, yay, microgreens are here. That's that's exciting for us to know that our product is making somebody's life yeah. happier. Two years later, they still, they still love it as much as they did on day one. It's really cool to see that. Yeah. So thanks for having me, you guys. Thank you, Chris. This has been awesome. Um, what, is the, what does the next year look like? And then after that, what's the next five years look like? For sure. We always try to plan ahead and we always have our goals and our visions, but it yeah. seems to always change. We're, the demand for this is amazing. Like we do a lot yeah. of consulting worldwide and we're hearing the need for this from small rural towns to large metropolitan centers. So it, always, it just keeps pushing us forward. So the next year, we're probably hoping to at least almost double this operation. So we're looking into distributing past Alberta, maybe looking into federal and what that's going to require for different restrictions and inspections and so forth. But for us, it's keeping the same model. We do high yield, high turnover. We want convenient crops that taste amazing, mm -hmm. that last a long time in refrigerators, that can be used for a multitude of different clients, said from high-end restaurants to your average consumer. We want it to be that always that model is brought forward. Five years from now, who knows whether we're going to be in this spot. I think we're going to be easily 10 times this type of volume. So four or 5,000 trays a week, I think is pretty feasible for us and what that's going to look like. We're going to see how it goes. And this is one client at a time, one day at a time. And that's our goal. I think a lot in this next year too, uh, we have been really fortunate since moving into this place to be able to have uh, local families come through, local schools come through and to educate them on what is a microgreen? What are the benefits? And same thing going back to those things is what are these cute little teeny tiny plants that, um, that you say are good for me? So we've been fortunate to have school groups come through, um, chef classes so in a high school. We had a homeschool group come through. Um, so I would love to be able to do more of that in the next yeah. year. More educating within the community of what is this product? What, how do I use it? Things There's like urban that. urban agriculture. How yeah. Is, yeah. How is this going to change the landscape? Or how is this sustainable yeah. opposed to with a growing population? How is being indoors sustainable? Um, for food production. For, yeah. That's it. And have fun doing it. Yeah. yeah. So you guys did mention consulting, you're doing tours. I, I, I imagine since the last YouTube video that's elevated your profiles a little bit more, which is awesome. If people want to get in touch with you guys, find out more about you, what's the best place to do that? Uh, there's a couple of ways that, to get a hold of us. Um, the easiest way is possibly we launched our new website this past year, so microacres.ca. Uh, and through that, there's a contact us um, tab that you can do that and it sends us an email and we can just send you, shoot you an email back that way. Um, again, Facebook is a great way as well uh, or in DM us through Instagram. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Thanks Curtis. Thanks so much Appreciate for coming. It. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'd love to take this opportunity to invite you to a web class that I'm doing talking about microgreens and how you can make 1500 bucks a week profit without selling at any of the conventional market streams such as restaurants, farmers markets, grocery stores, or distributors. Out of all the over thousand videos that I've published on my YouTube channel and my website over the last six years, this is by far the most valuable and relevant to the time content that I've ever produced. 